All right, folks, welcome into another episode of I've Got a Theory with Hennish Polokal. I've got my guest on today is John Gudikunst, who runs Gratitude Financial. Uh, and he's a financial advisor and specialist, but we're not going to talk about that today because John's got a theory he wants to share. I'm excited to hear it. John, tell me what you got. Hi, right, Hennish. Nice meeting with everybody. Uh, my theory is that reality is more complex than 99% of people are even willing to admit to. That's what wow. my theory is. That's bold. So, you know, so what does that mean that it's more complex? And tell me what reality you're referring to and, and give, me, give me an example. Well, that's a deep question. What, what, what reality am I referring to? We can go down, there's a lot of rabbit holes in that one there. But what I'm referring to in general is just that there's just more to life than most, most people are even, have even contemplated. Like they haven't even thought about it. Like what's, what's going on here in existence as a whole? It's way more complex than what we've been told and what we've, what we've thought about as well. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, what you, what you perceive is your reality. But if you're only perceiving the top layer of reality, how many more layers down can we go when you start unraveling and finding out what the, the truth of it is or, or how deep this goes? Exactly. And then what have you been conditioned to perceive? What level of depth you've been conditioned to perceive? And have you even thought about like, oh, wait a minute, have I been trained to only think in a certain way? You know, and it just... This is something that I've seen in a lot of people out there because part of my personal background, I've also ran a life coaching and personal transformation business for four years. So I love the psychology side of things. I love the finance side of things too. And in both of those worlds, when somebody gets in a really dark spot, their reality gets kind of stuck in this place where they think something's wrong with them or there's, there's a limited set of op options to them. And then they start thinking all these things based on what they perceive to their reality to be, right? So you see it in the psychology world if you do enough research as to how do people really turn their lives around on like the mental health side of things, their reality shifts and changes. Yeah. And the same thing happens in finance too, ironically with investing, I'm not going to go down there, but in investing, we constantly are you know, gauging like, Hey, this is what I think is true. This is what I think is true. This is what I think is true. And then bam, turns out not to be true. So 100%. there's a few ways you can look at it. This whole concept as well. Yeah, no. And let me chime in. Cause it's, it's interesting. Cause you know, with our construction company, I'm having regular conversations with people about building accessory dwelling units, ADUs, cause they're a hot topic building these granny flats because of the housing shortage we've got in California. And a lot of times people's questions are how much does it cost? Right. And if the answer was as simple as that, that would be that top 1% that you're seeing. Yes, it costs $200,000. But what yeah. they're not seeing is, what are the tax implications? How can you do accelerated depreciation to, to offset your income? Are there other gains on this on the backside that you're not thinking of? So just thinking of that number is how much it costs doesn't work, right? Because you have to think of all the other financial implications like, can you get money for cheap on this? Is there a loan that you could get? Is that offset by the mortgage interest deduction? And can you separate things out? Because now that's the other 98% you're talking about on the reality of the cost of building these things, right? Which is applicable to everything. And so um, you know, you tell me your takeaway from this, but one of the things I'm thinking of is that it's important to stay humble out there and realize that the things that you think you know is just the tiniest bit of it because there's so much more out there. Even if you think you're an expert, you probably still only scratch the, the top of the surface of the topic that you think you're an expert at. Yeah, you may even think you know one or two percent of the total, but you probably only know like 0. 0.00002 percent of the total of that one particular topic. And we've talked about kind of construction, investing, psychology right now. That same thought stream of like, hey, there's always more beneath the surface. There's always more layers to it and even more layers beyond the surface, if you will. It, that same logic and thought pattern, you can analyze that and say, hey, look, what about reality itself? You know, and that's when I that's what I mean, reality. Think, you know, kind of sci-fi stuff. You know, is there a future self, past tense self? Is there like the other inception points? Watch the movie Inception or watch the movie Doctor Strange and what, what things can happen in life. And that's more so what I mean to this. I mean, I've always been really fascinated with just the complexity of one simple blade of grass. You think about all the different life forms in that and how the heck does sunlight and water and all this stuff come together. And that's just one little blade of grass. And right. there's jillions of those things across the one person's backyard, you know, like, and just can't help but think that there's just so much more out there than we have been trained to perceive and or are willing to even admit is possible to being a, a part of existence as a whole. So what's a, what's a good takeaway for people that are, might be listening to this in terms of like, you know, how do you use what you're saying as a theory and apply it to their regular lives? What, what can you do to say, okay, I get this, I get this concept. Here's how I'm going to apply it. Yeah, love, love what you said, be humble. Like you always gotta take the takeaway. I mean, you, you just, you can't be humble enough in the whole grand scheme of things. 
And then the big thing would be, especially in times like this or in the middle of a crisis, be willing to question whether your thoughts are actually your thoughts or your words are actually your words. Like make sure that every single thought that's coming out, every single statement you're saying, you've put deliberate thought behind it. You're not just repeating something else that you've heard or read or, or watched somewhere else. And there's times where literally I'll recite things word for word, that's fine if you've thought about it before and you completely agree with it. If you haven't really put a lot of thought into it, you know, maybe slow down a little bit and just kind of think about it some more. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good way and a perspective to approach things because it's tough when, when you have a conversation with someone and they say, you're wrong, and, and that's the end of the story, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's not necessarily the end of the story because that's just you know, a perspective or maybe I wasn't able to convey my point properly. But I never, I never would tell someone that they're wrong. I just get that based on their past, based on what they've learned, this is what they believe. Exactly. And, and, it's, and it's a makeup of their history, not necessarily their intelligence. I think it's, that's another thing to kind of remember too, a practical takeaway is it's fun to have like a debate with somebody and guys, especially in the sports world, we see it all the time. Like, Oh, the Packers are better than the bears. Or the Seahawks are better than the Patriots. You name it, right? That it's fun to have that banter and the investing world's very similar. Like, Oh, this stock sucks. This sucks. Great. You name it. Right. But even in different topics going on right now, be willing to be wrong. That's part of being humble and be willing to hear somebody out because you just never know what you can learn from their perspective. Even if you completely disagree with it. You're yeah. Really hard Democrat, really hard Republican. I'm not neither of those, but be willing to always listen to somebody else and kind of like, you know, be willing to check yourself. if you will. And that's one of the key purposes of this podcast is to understand people's perspectives, right? When someone tells me something that I personally might think is wrong as a theory, it doesn't matter because I want to know why they believe it, why it's important to them. And that's peeling back those layers of reality, right? Because what you might be thinking about is just that top 1%, but you're not seeing the rest of it that makes up why it's there or, or the underlying reasons for yeah. why, why it is the way it is. And second, you're willing to admit that there may be more to it, whatever it is, than what you believe, your life changes. Whether it's your yeah. thoughts about yourself, about relationships, it's huge for people, money, health, you name it. Like once, the, it's kind of like a key milestone you have to get to. You have to be willing to realize and admit that what you believe to be true might not be 100% accurate. Right, that's, that's a huge uh, awakening for a lot of people once you can get to that point, right? And it's, prob it's probably a journey. It's, not, it's never like a switch. You're like, okay, now I recognize that I've been kind of closed-minded about something. And, and there's so much out there about everything being a journey. If you do enough analysis, there are some key milestones that everybody gets to that kind of progresses and enjoys their lives more. That is in their own words, their own ways, their own awakening, if you will. That's one key milestone the vast majority of people get to that really improve their lives. They kind of, wait, wait a minute, I might be wrong here, you know, like there might be more to it than I believe. So. Yeah, that's huge. So John, um, anything further in this theory that we need to chat about? Because otherwise I was going to wrap it up because I think we've covered it pretty nicely and I like this theory a lot. And, yeah. and I think it gets people thinking that, okay, cool, let's consider other perspective. Let's consider other ideas because there's more out there than I know. And every day you should be open to the, uh, the concept of learning something you might not know about. I think you summarized it perfect, man. There might be more than you perceive right now. And just question what you've been conditioned to perceive and question whether, you, whether, the, whether what you think is true is actually true. So I yeah. Think well, one, of my, one of my favorite thought experiments is, is like when something is coming up, I'm always trying to look at the range of possibilities from like worst case to best case or everything in between. Yeah. In that way, yeah, if, if it goes to either extreme, I, you know, I'm like, okay, it fell within the realm of possibility of what I understood. So I'm always looking to expand that. And it's not just linear. It's not a linear bell curve. It's a 3D bell curve and a fourth dimensional bell curve. Like that's how many possibilities are out there. <laughs> 2D is easy to understand. Like right. Just, but that's what's out there, man. Yeah. And, and it's good to come, come with that, you know, that humbleness and that curiosity to understand things because um, don't, don't let limit yourself to what you think you know is a fact because that's changing. You know, things that we thought were facts 10 years ago are no longer facts. Two minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. John, appreciate your time with me on the show. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing more about your company in the coming months and years. And uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you for listening. If you like the show, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just listen to I've Got a Theory with Hanesh Polakul and my guest, John Gutekunst. Thanks, Perfect. guys.